Hello, I'm Carolyn Baker, and I live in Boulder, Colorado right now, but uh, in a couple of months I'm going to be visiting Vermont for about a week, and uh, I'm going to be conducting a workshop in Rochester, Vermont on September 24th called Navigating the Coming Chaos, and uh, I'm going to be also giving a couple of public talks in the Burlington area and in Montpelier uh, in a few days before that workshop. And uh, I want to tell you a little bit about the workshop and the work that I do. Um, <clears throat> for about 10 years, I've been researching world events and uh, have really come to understand that we're in the midst of a number of converging crises around energy, economy, and the environment that the human species have not faced before. <clears throat> This is causing us to really have to prepare for some unprecedented changes in our lives. And many people, and I noticed especially in the state of Vermont, are making preparations for this sort of uh, events, uh, number recurring events that are going to be taking place. Um, they're very savvy about what the future holds, and yet very often uh, in that mix of making logistical preparation, we don't focus enough on the emotional and spiritual preparation that needs to be made in order to navigate the future. So my work is about this. Um, when I was in Vermont, uh, living there for about a year in 2008 and 9, I wrote the book Sacred Demise, Walking the Spiritual Path of Industrial Civilization's Collapse. I do see what we are experiencing now in the world as a planetary initiation for our species. That our species is making a, <clears throat> a descent uh, to the deeper parts of the soul being forced upon us by all of these changes. So that we're going to have to find meaning not in being consumers anymore not in shopping, not in acquiring, not in the material world but we're going to have to find meaning in community with each other, in growing food, in, in taking care of each other, and also find meaning within ourselves. So that's very much what my work is about, and I'm looking very forward to being in Vermont, especially uh, during foliage season, and meeting the wonderful people there again, some of, of whom I already know and many that I don't know. Um, because I love Vermont and so many of the values that it really is bringing to our situation at the present time. <clears throat> so we've heard a lot about peak oil and the unraveling of industrial civilization and you put it in very positive tones. You seem to be treating it as an opportunity. But what people seem to be asking around Vermont is um, amidst all this negativity, what can a community do? What can a family do? Oh, there are so many things that communities and families can do. You know, a lot of times I hear people say, I don't really want to talk about this stuff. It's so negative. Well, on the one hand it is, because it's going to demand from us a tremendous change in the way we live and very much in the way we think in the ways that we relate to each other and to ourselves and to the earth community. Um, so there are going to be a lot of losses in the mix, but at the same time, this is a tremendous opportunity for us to really come together and get to know each other and watch each other's backs and, and really form community. I don't mean just that we all become good friends, which of course that's part of the mix, but that we really see each other as necessary for our own survival and evolution. You know, there are a lot of people who say, well, these terrible things might be, be off in our future and we might have to make all these changes. And so I'm just going to grab my gun and my family and I'm going to go find some homestead in the mountains and I'm going to isolate and just take care of me and mine. Those folks are not going to be able to survive. The only way we'll be able to survive is to come together as community and help each other uh, and prepare for this. And the more we prepare for this ahead of time, in current time, 
um, the more equipped we're going to be when things get very dire. So there's a movement in, in Vermont called Transition Towns. They actually started in the UK and uh, there's a Transition US, Transition Towns and a few towns cropping around up around Vermont. Um, they're emphasizing something called reskilling. Uh, can you tell us what that means? Sure. Um, I'm a huge fan of the transition movement. Um, I'm really in awe of the theory of transition and what has been accomplished in many, many communities throughout the world uh, by using the transition model. Um, one of the pieces of that model is reskilling. And that simply means that a lot of folks realize that without energy as we know it now, at the end of the age of oil, we're going to be without a lot of the energy that we take for granted today that helps us make things and grow food and just keep our society on the road as we have been doing for several hundred years. So reskilling means that we learn skills that we're going to need post peak oil. That would mean things like learning permaculture, a design system that helps us with growing food and other areas of our lives. We need to learn about organic gardening. We need to learn skills like carpentry. Uh, we need to learn skills around making things with our hands. And we also need to learn skills around communicating with each other and building community. And that's very much what my work is about. So we need the logistical skills, we also need the emotional and spiritual skills. So going back to your speaking tour of Vermont, uh, one of those events is Saturday the 24th, an all-day workshop in Rochester, Vermont. Uh, can you tell us what that workshop's all about? It's going to be very much what my book is about, Navigating the Coming Chaos, a handbook for inner transition. We're going to look at how important it is to not only build these bunkers of security logistically, but also build our internal bunker within ourselves, finding meaning within ourselves. Then we're going to talk about relationships and how we really connect with each other. We're going to talk about some of the dark emotions that come up when we think about the future and how we can utilize those dark emotions to empower ourselves. Um, a woman named Miriam Greenspan wrote a wonderful book called Healing Through the Dark Emotions and I quote her quite a bit in my book and she talks about how the dark emotions can help us if we can work with them to become warriors of vulnerability, that we allow ourselves to open to these emotions, which ultimately makes us stronger and more whole as we face these daunting times. And then we're gonna just, you know, have some, some social time, and we're going to have an opportunity in all of the events that I do for people to ask questions, to break up into small groups and get to know each other, and really get a feel for where we are, not only individually, but in our communities with each other. Okay, so beyond the workshop, you'll have a few evening speaking engagements, Burlington, Montpelier, and a few other places that we're setting up right now. Uh, what do you intend to discuss in those? Well, one of the things that I do, and people can uh, get a sampler of this by going to my website, carolynbaker.net, that's Carolyn with a Y. My website, Speaking Truth to Power, you can go there and you can click on Carolyn's interviews and see a couple of, uh, of places in which I have been telling stories with the African drum. I like to tell stories because, number one, we're going to need new stories as we move into this new era of the human species. We're going to re have to replace old stories with these new stories. But some of the new stories are actually quite ancient. And so I like to tell these stories with an African drum, which helps us kind of circumvent the intellect and go more into our hearts and deeper feelings and really come from a very different place than if we were just using the rational linear mind. 
So what we typically do in a public talk is I tell a story and people talk about the things that really grab them in the story. They talk about what speaks to them. We usually have some group interaction with each other and then we have a question and answer period. And when people have a place to talk about their concerns, it makes all the difference in the world. And so I want to provide that place in these public talks. Okay. In closing, the, um, the dates of the workshop, that's... The date of the workshop in Rochester, Vermont is September 24th. That's a Saturday. We begin at 9 a.m. And then we're going to have a public talk on Wednesday evening in Burlington. Um, please stay tuned to our website and further publicity to see the exact time and place. And then we're going to have a public talk on the night of the 22nd in Montpelier, um, which will be at the library. And also, please stay tuned for time and place. All right. Thank you, Carolyn. You're welcome.